The History of Diamonds by Eugene Brill Adamas The Greek word for diamond. It means unconquerable. And it was thought by the ancient Greeks that diamonds were splinters of the stars that had fallen down to earth. The first mention that we have of the word diamond is by the high priest in the book of Exodus in the Bible, chapter 28. Diamonds have fascinated man, and in particular women, throughout recorded history. For 2000 years, India was the main producer of gem quality diamonds, and they produced some spectacular stones. The Kohinoor diamond, the Orlov diamond, and the infamous blue Hope Diamond. It is reputed that the Hope Diamond brings bad luck to whomever possesses it. Currently the Hope Diamond is on display at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington DC and I sincerely hope that President Obama knows about this curse because it is quite obvious that his predecessors, Presidents Bush and Clinton, did not. In 1866, on a farm in South Africa, a young shepherd boy picked up a shiny pebble that turned out to be the 21 karat Eureka diamond. This discovery catapulted South Africa into the largest producer of gem quality diamonds in the world. It is ironic to note that this discovery comes only months after a report released by the British government, which in they stated, Southern Africa is not worth colonizing because it does not possess any mineral wealth whatsoever. Boy, did they luck out. In 1888, after a series of very astute business maneuvers, Cecil John Rhodes and Barney Bonato formed the De Beers Consolidated Diamond Mining Company. In 1917, Sir Ernest Oppenheimer moved to South Africa and got involved in the diamond fields on the west coast of Southern Africa. A few years later, the Oppenheimers combined their family holdings with those of De Beers, and together with financier J.P. Morgan, they formed the Anglo-American Corporation. Weak demand for diamonds during the Great Depression led to the formation of the CSO, or the Central Selling Organization, and an empire was born. This con cartel controlled the supply and demand of diamonds for decades to come. Diamonds are crystals formed from pure carbon subjected to extreme heat and pressure. Now these conditions existed about 90 million years ago, 400 kilometers below the surface of the earth. Through volcanic movement, these newly formed crystals, a thousand times harder than steel and the hardest substance known to man, were transported to the surface of the earth in molten volcanic rock. The way that a diamond is mined is that the diamondiferous gravel or the blue ground is moved to a diamond recovery plant. Now a diamond has three very distinct and specific unique characteristics. First of those is a diamond has a very high specific gravity which means a diamond is very heavy. Second of all, a diamond fluoresces under x-ray. And the third quality is that a diamond does not get wet. So ladies, what that means, if you take your engagement ring and you put it under running water, the water molecules will not stick to those of the diamond crystal. A diamond remains dry forever. So the way the diamonds are recovered is the diamondiferous gravel or the blue ground is mixed with water to form a slurry. This is then washed over a vibrating greased table and everything that is dry, like the diamonds, stick to the grease. What is not, is just washed right over. Not all the diamonds are recovered this way, some diamonds actually slip over. And they go into the next process where the gravel is fed through a x-ray machine. As soon as a diamond fluoresces, a trap door opens and a burst of air shoots the diamond into a glove box for the final hand recovery. From there, it's off to the cutting factory. A diamond loses between 40 and 60% of its value during the cutting process. A round, brilliant diamond, the most popular shape, has 58 facets 
each facet meticulously cut into the side of the diamond by hand. The way the diamonds are valued is by using the four C's. The first C is the cut. Now the cut not only refers to the shape of the diamond, whether it's a round or marquee or a heart shape, it also refers to the actual angle at which the facets lie, which reflect the light in and out of a diamond and causes that brilliance or that sparkle that we all know and love about diamonds. The second C is the color. It starts at the top of the alphabet, actually not quite at the top, it starts at D, and then progressively goes down the alphabet. And as you move down the alphabet, the diamonds get more yellow up until the color P, where they are literally the color of P. And from there, they get brown and gray as you move further down the alphabet. The third C is the clarity of the diamond. Here we refer to the amount of inclusions or imperfections caught within the diamond crystal. And the last C is the carat weight. This refers to how big the diamond is. And here it is true. The bigger, the better. Size does matter. The diamond industry is supported by a $50 billion jewelry industry. And this industry has more than doubled in size since 1990. During the recent economic slowdown, we saw demand for diamonds decline. But it's down, but not out. And unlike oil, we are not looking for an alternative. So ladies, you can rest assured, a diamond will always remain a girl's best friend. Thank you very much.